covariance okay um, be looking looking at covariance um, sample covariance uh, correlation and regression okay and um, just to again um, um, make everybody clear that anytime when we're doing data analysis so we select a sample okay when you when you did your survey you collected a sample okay so therefore when we do analysis we use a sample and and using a sample data we try to infer about generalize the result that's what we try to do and we also uh, do this analysis so that we can um, we can confirm some of our belief or some of our hypothesis that's reason is so this is what we have for today and this is what you will be tested on your on your final exam okay um this is a uh, scatter plot scatter plot is a is a great tool especially if you're looking at the relationship between the two uh, quantitative uh, data um so scatter plot when you have a two quantitative data let's let's say for example if you're looking at the looking at let's say uh, the age of the person and amount of wealth they have do you think there's a relationship between age of the person and the wealth they have and and that's what we're looking for is the relationship or not for example so so obviously as you can see that uh, when we do scatter plot it helps you to understand that how strong the relationship is at least to see if there's a relationship exists between between or not and also scatter plot is also use is very useful technique to find out any unusual combination for example um i was looking at my uh, business two to six student data file and um, and it's very common to find some some data point which is very unusual for example like um let's say you know uh, you could say that uh, uh, let, let's go back to my example wealth and the age we all know that uh, generally when you, when people age right so over the year you accumulate wealth for example right and then you can say that there's a positive relationship wealth and age right older you are uh, relatively more wealthy you are but of course um, somebody could be a young <clears throat> young person and could be very wealthy for example so that's not very common by the way in a, in a, in a general population but but you will find some unusual so this is uh, relatively unusual in that sense and it doesn't mean that it's wrong but but especially if you're looking a specific direction and some data points are giving you otherwise then that become an unusual combination so let's look at some scatter plot so here's a scatter plot so what do you think of this scatter, scatter plot so there's a relationship between x and uh, y1 x uh, is your uh, generally x axis x variable y y axis variable so what we see here is we see that the the points scatter fairly evenly around the line the line is uh, is known also known as is a regression line sometimes it is also known as line of best fit okay the regression, so the regression equation is this this is simple linear equation y hat or also known as estimated y y is the outcome variable and b0 is your intercept here's a b0 and this is b0 and that's one is b1 on the slope so that's your slope so somebody say hey what is what do you, what do you mean by slope this is slope what is slope is so so slope i mean of course people say change in y over the change in x so it means that if you change x by one unit what's the change on y is like average so one unit change on y what's the average change on uh, x y would be if you change x by one unit all right and this is intercept so what's intercept is intercept is basically when the y is zero rather when x is zero so what's your what's the value of y is okay this is when the x is zero look at my zero pretty cool eh? so this is uh, uh, zero all right anyway uh, is this a good scatter plot answer is yes what kind of relationship do we see a positive linear relationship can we use this data to do any predictive modeling answer is yes so it's good so that means there is okay because you see this all this data all this uh, all this uh, different data points here you see all these data 
they all are they all are around the line so it's good but now let's look at this data point If the number is negative okay like this if the number is negative what does it mean it means that the relationship between x and y is negative it means that if x moves in one direction then y moves in opposite direction okay uh, and if the number is positive positive number okay if the number is positive okay if the number is positive for example so what does that mean it means that x and y moves in the same uh, same direction that's what it means but it does not tell you that how strong the relationship is you got it so because the reason is this because the number you get here whether it's a zero close to zero or zero whatever that number may be if it's close to zero or it's negative positive that depends upon the scale of measurement of x variable and the y variable okay so so you don't really see quite often people using a covariance so what do you see instead of covariance what people use people use correlation coefficient actually here it is so this is a very important distinction correlation coefficient measure the relative strength okay it's a very important word you shouldn't remember relative strength of the linear relationship between the two numerical variables okay so one more thing when you before you run a correlation coefficient make sure that you screen out for any uh, unusual data points any outliers otherwise uh, your your correlation could be misleading as you can imagine we just saw some of the scatter plots so what does the correlation uh, uh, correlation coefficient formula look like this is what it look like this is a covariance we saw in the couple slides ago this is covariance covariance divided by anybody what is this what is this symbol represents this symbol represent the standard deviation of x variable okay and this symbol represent the standard deviation of the y variable so basically what is co what is a correlation coefficient correlation coefficient is a covariance divided by the standard deviation of x variable y variable and if you want to see a literal formula this is what it look like here it is covariance Divide by the standard deviation x variable and standard deviation y variable. And some of you probably wonder what happened to n minus 1. It's cancelled out. Okay. Because n minus 1 for this, n minus 1 for this. So n minus 1 times n minus 1 square root give you n minus 1. And, and the numerator was also n minus 1. So they cancelled out. So this is what you got. So this is a computational formula. Okay. Of sample, uh, sample, uh, sample, sample correlation coefficient. And, and of course, um, uh, you know what n is, n is a sample size, okay? And, and once again, Sx and Sy are the standard deviation of x and y variables, okay, of two variables respectively. So the, now, now you're going to, when you get the number, so you're going, you will have a standardized number. So what is the scale of a correlation coefficient? The scale goes bet, between negative one to positive one, all right? So here's a negative one okay perfect correlation coefficient and this is a positive one perfect positive correlation so basically perfect mean that both are moving exact same unit perfect right but but in real life you really see a perfect correlation coefficient okay i i haven't seen any perfect correlation coefficient okay unless it's a theoretical example anyway uh does it really matter if a number is negative positive answer is no because it depends upon the relationship right if you're looking for a relationship between the uh, between the amount of our studies and 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 the grade change right so you should expect a positive relationship agreed you should expect positive but if you're looking for if you're looking for is a um, um, the higher the price and the lower the uh, lower the sales so we're looking for some negative relationships so again it's a it's it's it's, it's a context uh, uh, context of uh, of the of the situation of course the next question is so what you what, what's a good number so of course these numbers will give you indication for example so of course you can see that there's a negative positive correlation and um, uh, if you get one and one they are, they are perfect which is very doesn't really happen but after, after anyway but this is a range of the numbers 
and if you get number somewhere between five and one either either side we consider is like okay it's a strong close to five it's a it's a it's a, it's a moderate and weak okay and once again um, correlation coefficient number you have to re read the number within the context of your work right uh, sometime you might get a very strong correlation uh, coefficient for example like one example i can think from from marketing perspective would be is the uh, the amount of money in advertisement and the sales i mean you know you do expect a, a positive relationship right like i'm thinking about tim horton's roll up the rim because this is a money spent adver advertising this roll up the rim and more people go and buy this uh, tim horton's coffee so there is a positive positive correlation happening there okay um so um so yeah so you have to kind of uh, and then you do expect a, a a strong number right uh but on the other hand if you try to study the econo economical factor affecting the uh, affect economy of the nation for example so answer is not very easy agreed uh, because there are so many factors affecting the economy okay uh, it's not just a labor force uh, as a matter of fact currently the factor affecting our economy is beyond anybody control as a matter of fact um, so current situation uh, is a very uh, interesting actually so 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 therefore um, so if you try to do any analysis based upon some numbers there will be doesn't make any sense because the sort of results will may not able to capture the whole essence but however if you get a small correlation coefficient number doesn't mean that that number is bad either so again uh, look at the context of your research look at the context of the data all right so next thing i'm going to show you is how would you do a correlation spss and again for most of you you probably know how to do this thing it's not very difficult but let me show you how you do an spss okay uh, just a one point about spss uh, spss is available in our lab uh, but i do understand some of you can't go to lab because it's not available uh, there is also a two-week trial version of spss available at ibm uh, website so uh, if you haven't already downloaded this IBM SPSS two weeks trial you definitely can download this two weeks trial from IBM website just a two week trial SPSS it will pop up to that window okay uh, and um, yeah so let me quickly show you uh, in case if you forgot so uh, open up your SPSS and go into the analyze here it is okay analyze menu within the analyze there's a correlation Check on the correlation and as you check on the correlation then we show you a bunch of correlation option one is the correlation option we're interested is called bivariate okay and once you click on the bivariate then you're going to get see this screen here and which is very simple now we see all these bunch of variables i have and you just select the variables you're interested in um, so for example if i'm interested in people living in in cities for example if i'm people living in city let's say i'm going to select this variable people living in city here this is a variable people living in city and i also want to for example let's say and this is a female literacy rate let's say if i want to see the <laughs> is the relationship between the urbanization people living in cities basically urbanization and the literacy of female literacy i simply go and click this uh, arrow here it will drop those two variables for me here right and of course you can always select more than two variables now what I normally do which is my trick is, is when I'm trying to uh, do a correlation with the multiple variables and of course you always have one variable in mind your main variable right um, sometimes you don't need to have the main variable like when I say main variable I meant by your outcome variable but if you have outcome variable that's great if you don't have if you just start fishing around to see if the relationship exists among data then you just select or, or, or variables you want to study but then in case if i have a one specific variable in mind i want to see how other variables correlate to this specific variable then i'm going to select that variable first okay so i will select that variable first here that be my v1 the very first variable then i'll select the remaining variable like my other variable i want to study for like v2 and v3 and v4 and v5 and v6 and, and v7 for example all right so here it is <clears throat> so that's what you do 
So once you select a variable, you simply uh, say OK. Here's the OK button. Right now it's not visible because they, we haven't selected any variable. And reason I didn't select any variable because I'm not really using SPSS. I'm using a screenshots of SPSS. Okay. So once I do that, and one of the um, beautiful thing about regression is so we can see the impact of this uh, X variable on my Y variable, right? So uh, what is the, for example, if I if I change my X, how much impact does it bring on Y? For example, I, again going back to this. The, uh, example I'm using this the, the literacy rate and uh, let's say um, people life expectancy for example right so if you say if you improve the literacy by this percentage the people will live that much longer right so that's the that's something about linear regression allows us to do that what what is it about linear regression we're interested in this this uh, this uh, this slope b1 we're interested in this slope. All right. So in this equation, one more time, we, we, we went through this equation. The y hat is your estimate, the estimated y value, the one you're predicting. All right. B0 is your, uh, is your intercept when x is equal to 0. And B1 is a slope and x1 is your independent variable. So, so sim simple linear regression is simple, as you can see that, because it has only one variable, right? Uh, I mean, my one of the example I quite often use is, hey, what affect house price? And somebody say, oh, the house price is affected by the house size. It was great. The more bigger the house you buy, the more money you pay. Makes sense, right? But we also know that the house price is not only just defect depend upon the house size, but it also depends upon when the house was built. I'm sure if you if the, if the house is built in 1948 and the house is built in 2020. Uh, their price will be much different because would you like to live in a house built in 1948? I don't think so, right? Uh, most of probably want to live in a new newer home, so perhaps you pay the more money for the new house, right? You get the idea. So it's not only just the house size, but then the house is built, for example. Perhaps in the location even matter, for example. Like you know, we all hope or like to live in a nice location, right? Um, when you open your window, you can see some plant, I guess, some tree. You know, I mean, I always had a dream when you open your window of your house, you see some beautiful green space, right? Because it's very soothing for the eyes. So therefore, the house price depends upon many factors. So therefore, simple linear regression is too simple to solve practical problems. So a lot of researchers kind of don't use simple linear regression quite often because it's too simple, right? So then people use this uh, linear, uh, multiple linear regression. Multiple linear regression is kind of same idea, right? As I said, uh, now you don't have to choose one variable. You can choose more than one variable, it's independent variables, right? So you have more than one independent variable. So the next is I have a nice one to show you. So here it is. Let's say this is your dependent variable. The one example I was giving you the uh, that when I was giving you the 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 house price, for example, right? The dependent variable and house price depends upon a bunch of these uh, these factors. So x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, 6, could be more. So these are independent variables. So if this is a house price, if y is your uh, it, it is your house price, for example, here is my Canadian dollar. Okay, uh, is it two line or one line? I think one line or two line. One line. Okay, so uh, this is my Canadian dollar. Okay, uh, and these are my different house house housing properties. Like this is my house size. This is my number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms. Uh, what else? This would be um, basement suite. <laughs> yes or no? Uh, what else could be? We can think of affecting the house price. How about swimming pool? I don't have a swimming pool and I don't want a swimming pool because I can't work on the swimming pool. Too much work. Um, I'd rather just go to the community center and just enjoy the swimming pool there at the community center. Swimming pool. Some people like swimming pool. I used to live in Toronto. My neighbor had a swimming pool and he just enjoyed the swimming pool so much. I was like, all the time there's a party going on in a swimming pool. Uh, swimming pool. Uh, and what is this one? Could be um, 
what else do you think oh yes you know what when i was looking uh, when i was looking to place to live i was looking for public transit because i didn't have the car so i was looking for the so i can take a bus to go to work or the school right you see we have many many variables now so now we have a robust model now which is very interesting because now we have this uh, one dependent variable dependent variable is also known as predictor um, Dependent variables also known as outcome variables, okay, not the predictor. These are predictors, okay. These are independent variables and predictor. They're predicting your outcome variables. Uh, now, when you're building this model, what do you think might be a potential problem? Uh, one of the potential problems which we'll talk about later is called multicollinearity because we know that bigger homes will have more bedrooms, okay, like bigger will have more bedrooms and will have more bathrooms. Are you with me? So they're kind of redundant in that sense, right? I mean, like, so. If you build a model with number of bedrooms and number of bathrooms, okay, number of bathrooms along with the house size, for example, so you do notice that, like, you know, that these days the newer homes, if you have seen the new newer homes, practically every room has a bathroom. The first home I lived in uh, in Toronto, Scarborough, the house has only one bathroom, and I'm not kidding, one bathroom. If you're a family of 10 and you one bathroom, good luck, literally good luck. And the reason I tell you why this happened, uh, after the Second World War, when people came back to the back to the country, let's like back to Canada, for example, and there's a huge demand for this, who shortage for the housing and huge demand for the housing because all sources came back, they start establishing their families and they needed homes. So they, they start building this uh, uh, small family homes actually. And these family homes, they're they are basically, they are mostly like utility purpose. Build a home so people can start their families. They're not looking for like fancy homes, right? They're not looking for like, you know, the views and this and that. So like very basic, modest home. So so I had a privilege living in one of the basic modest home. And, and actually I love that home. It was nice. So uh, smaller home, one bathroom, great. But if, when I came to here in uh, Vancouver, and uh, a lot of homes practically have one room, one bathroom. Even even they even have, it's called powder room. I don't know what it's called powder room, but it's called a powder room. In the main floor, there's a room, which is, uh, so anyway, too many rooms here. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, so, so problem with this model is that when you have too many independent variables, that some of the variables start interacting with each other, okay? They will start interacting with each other when they interact with each other okay when they start interacting with each other we have problem you know the regression assumption right what does the regression assumption says regression assumption says right here it says independent independent okay but they are not independent now anymore because they're depending the bigger house size the number of bathrooms depend upon the bigger house size number of bedrooms depends on bigger house size so when you're building a regression model so what i'm trying to say is this regression models multiple linear regression models sounds so cool so neat and you say dump all the variables so i have amazing beautiful models so my r square will be great right no it's not a good model as a matter of fact it's a bad model so what i'm my advice is when you're selecting when you're selecting your variables for your model when you're selecting variables for your model Give it, give it, give a, give a thought about it. Does this make sense? Do you think the potential, potential of these variables are interacting with each other? So keep that in mind. This is a good advice. So regression, multiple linear regression model is a kind of a similar to a, a simple linear regression model. All you have to do is just is add more uh, independent variables. So in before, if you see only this, this portion here, th what is this portion known as? This is simple linear. This is a simple linear regression equation okay what we have done more we added more independent variables here it is x2 and all the way to xk k is like one two three four k k number of independent variables okay so so k is your uh, uh, number of independent variables you have okay and 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 the b what is b is b is a slope slope of the line so this b1 b1 is slope for the x1 and b2 is a slope for the x2 and this bk is slope for xk all right so that is your regression model. And again, multi as I said earlier, was is uh, when the high correlation exists between your independent variables, between two independent variables, actually. When two independent variables are highly, uh, highly, so if, let's say if this is your one independent variable, x1, and this is another independent variable. I mean, technically, according to the regression assumption, they should be independent, right? 
but if they are not independent that means they both are kind of I wouldn't say depending on each other but they kind of interacting with each other for example that means they are technically are not independent they are kind of dependent with each other so that's a factor multicollinearity is so what are the factor multicollinearity we're talking about the factor multicollinearity has a very a lot of problems um, um, for example you might get a wrong sign you might get a very high r square value you might get uh, might get a um, value which are very which should not be significant should be significant in other words really it's it's really you would you would not able to know that the the fact happening in the model is it due to x1 or due to x2 you see so the effect of multicollinearity is not very good in the model multicollinearity should be avoided in the regression model so are there diagnostics to check multicollinearity you bet there are diagnostic in spss let me show you the formula here is so variance inflationary factor here is vif variance inflationary factor this is one divided by r square of course i'm not expecting you to do manually the wonderful thing we can do in, in in software so it's called tolerance and we're looking actually the number with the magic number we're looking here is uh, the number we're looking here is uh, if this number vif is more than or equal to five it means that we have a multicollinearity problem here it is if vif is five or more that means x x variable this x1 highly correlated with another x variable when i say explanatory variable that means independent variables so that means that let's say if i'm what is saying here saying that if r square j is a is a is a r square r square j j is a coefficient determination when the j independent variables regress against the remaining k minus one independent variables so that for example let's say if i if i do regression against x1 versus x2 that's what it means that right that's what my, that's what it means right here right so that's what r square is. r square is the is the regression between these two variables that's what i'm looking for and if this number is um, more five or more it means that there is a there is a multicollinearity between these two variables these two variables has a very high multicollinearity right so what happens when you discover multicollinearity you try to remove it you try to say if you find out hey if the number of bedrooms has the same meaning as the number of bathroom because you, you see what i'm saying that the new homes these days generally have every room has a bathroom these days okay or at least they have more rooms more bathrooms maybe if they don't have the same proportion of bathrooms in house but definitely there is a more, more than one bathroom it's not like my house uh, eons ago was uh, one bathroom okay uh, it was old homes okay uh, but new homes have more bathrooms okay so therefore you have to drop one variable and again building a model is not i know that like we live in a very fast-paced world we try to dump everything in our model and hopefully good things come out answer is no really you kind of have to um um you kind of have to um uh, savor it basically you have to say okay uh, if I remove, if I let, so what I'm really suggesting is this: if you find these two variables are highly correlated, so drop one variable, run your regression with just one variable. Okay, are you with me? And see how does your R square performs now? Because now you have a fewer variables, right? And then you run, uh, then you run, uh, then you run uh, with another variable, the x2, and see how your R square performs. R squares, okay. How does your r square perform and if your r square seems better with my second variable then uh, then perhaps i can use it and what i'm trying to say is this is so there is no magic answer sometimes you have to remove one variable and run the model with without one variable the one variable you think is highly high high, high collinearity and then 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 remove this variable and put the variable you already removed in the first time and try that i tried it again and then you build a model now the, the important thing here is this is when you're building a model right so as i said it's not like a quick and dirty way of doing any analysis you kind of have to build nicely remember ultimate goal of course right now because you're a student you just want to get your grade so you don't care about it. let's put everything in a model and hopefully it comes out but if you try to use this model in a real life solving a problem if you're building a financial model for example if you're building a futuristic model for example if you try to predict some life or something very important thing you're working on 
then you really have to give a pause and think about what is selecting in your model. And if there's multi community issue, then you try to deal with it. Because every model in real life has application. So you really want to give it a good thought to your model. And if you give a good thought to your model, and you're really going to have good good work. So let me show you the VIF done in SPSS. 